What's this? A negative video about Bitcoin? Oh, I'm sure this will play out well among YouTube's core demographics of millennials, Gen Zs, and people who fell asleep with autoplay on. This video was brought to you by viewers like you. Yes, you. Well, you if you're both American and one of the tens of thousands of people that use their government stimulus checks to buy Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Trumpcoin, Konai, useless Ethereum token, Cthulhu offerings, or any of the other thousands of cryptocurrencies. They've got such ridiculous names, I bet you didn't even realize that one of those was made up. Can you figure out which one? No, you can't because they're all real. And if you couldn't tell, well, that's the point. It's easy to see why cryptocurrencies are rising in popularity. Cthulhu offerings saw its value rise by more than 2300% in just three months, but then another three months later and it was worthless. And Dogecoin was started in 2013 as a joke on Reddit, but at the time of writing this script, at a market cap just north of $50 billion, it would be the 154th largest publicly traded company in the US, above Ford and Kraft Foods. The only other place you could see those kinds of returns is if you put a dollar into a vending machine and it accidentally popped out two candy bars. And then a city bus runs you over and you collect millions in the lawsuit. Most cryptocurrencies don't produce any goods or sell any products. Their biggest hope is that one day they'll be used as a currency for someone besides drug dealers on the dark web and edgy teenagers as they say the new world order is just around the corner. But despite what the hipsters will have you believe, there's a big problem with Bitcoin. For it to rise, the planet has to fall. When you buy something with Bitcoin, it involves a combination of public and private keys to authenticate everyone as who they say they are. Think of a public key like your credit card number. It's on the front of your card and everyone can see it, but there's also private information that needs to be checked if you're making a transaction. If you use your physical card in a store, that information is stored on those chips on newer cards. And if you buy something online, it's secondary information like the security pin or your billing address. When you send Bitcoin to someone, there's no central bank that can check if all your information is correct. Instead, it's spread out on the blockchain network. All Bitcoin transactions need to be verified by blockchain miners. Miners don't mine individual transactions. They mine blocks, which are collections of transactions. Essentially, a computer thinks of a number between one and infinity, and other computers take trillions of guesses at what it is. It's the old game of, I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10, except times a gazillion, and the guy guessing the number lives in China, and the guy who knows the number lives in the matrix. The problem is that all this computational mining takes a lot of energy, a seriously huge amount of it. Last year, Visa transactions used up 205 million kilowatt hours of electricity. That's the yearly electricity consumption of about 20,000 homes, or one Tesla fanboy but that was for 140 billion transactions. Meanwhile, Bitcoin uses more electricity per individual transaction than any other method known to mankind. Just one transaction uses more energy than 600,000 Visa transactions and has the same carbon footprint as 85,000 hours of watching YouTube or what a 15 year old calls a normal weekend. Bitcoin today is barely used as a currency but the transactions already use more energy than Netflix, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, and Google combined. Well, I guess Facebook's actually called Meta now. The hope is that one day cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin could become a global world currency and freely flow across borders without government intervention. But if only 10% of the world's monetary transactions were done in Bitcoin, that would use as much electricity as the US and China combined or the same as every other country in the world minus China and the US. That's the same energy consumption as 193 countries representing nearly 6 billion people, all for only 10% of transactions. According to recent research, if Bitcoin gets widely adopted, it could single-handedly produce enough emissions to raise global temperatures by 2 degrees Celsius as soon as 2033. There is some bright side to all this. Ethereum already uses less than 10% the energy per transaction as Bitcoin, and its founder, Vitalki Buterin, is confident he'll soon be able to drop the energy consumption to one ten thousandth the current requirement, which would bring it in line with current credit card transactions. Whether or not they can pull this off remains to be seen. But until crypto turns the planet into a blazing inferno, Dogecoin to the moon, am I right? If you're done dropping your hate messages in the comments section below, be sure to check out some of our other videos so you can leave the same comments there too. And remember, there is always more to learn.